Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 119. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we're here now for the Class S World Tour. Um, we're going to be taking the Koenigsegg CC8S. I haven't actually upgraded it. Let's quickly do that. Da -da 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 -da. Quick upgrade. Nice. Yeah, I've got the Iberia DLC as well. For Euro Truck. All right. Continue. <laughs> oh, it's got the fucking wing. Anyways, right. We're going to be doing the S-Class World Tour. We're going to be starting off with Camino Vado de Montserrat, Le Mans Circuit de la Sarth, uh, Road Atlanta, Mazda, Twin Ring, and then finishing off with Sunset. Let's get going. Yeah, the GT3 RS is a fucking legend. Rim, 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 rim. I actually think it was a better idea actually going for the Koenigsegg with the wing. Because it means we've actually got some, like, cornering ability. Oh, the only thing I forgot about is the Bugatti's in this. And the Bugatti is, like, it's rated as S-Class, but it should be R3. Like, it is that fast. And that's stupidly ridiculous. Uh, it'll probably be in the voice, just a general voice on Discord. Got away with that, nice. Boop, 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 boop. That extra race that we had to do really threw us off. Oh, fucking hell. What the hell was that? Not bad. You already have Iberia, fair enough. <laughs> I'm pretty excited actually to do some Euro Truck because. I've got about 10 minutes left on the job that I'm doing. Um, and then once I've done that, pretty much I'll have enough money to actually buy a new truck. So I'll be able to get a third truck. Which is awesome. I still only in um, American Truck Sim after like... Pretty much similar hours to what I've put into Euro Truck Sim now. American Truck, I was nowhere near where I was now. I don't know whether it was because in American Truck Sim I chose to not take any bank loans out. Maybe I should have taken a bank loan and just got a truck from the start. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 
<laughs> Alright, not bad. This Koenigsegg is such a lovely colour, look at that. The West Balkan. West Balkan? Did they announce that? I thought they had the Heart of Russia one. That's the only one that they've announced that's coming out soon. When is the next DLC supposed to come out, actually? Because Iberia came out last year, didn't it? So... Probably get another one next year. Oh, I went into reverse by accident. That's not good. So, uh, Wolfie, Zeno, what do you think of this uh, album, then? Pretty good, right? Ah, you prick. Ninth of August. We already knew. It. I haven't seen it on. Uh, what's it called? Steam. That's why. Because I know that Oklahoma. Sorry, the Texas one has come out, and they've announced Oklahoma immediately afterwards. But they've also got a, another one that they're working on for American Truck. But I didn't realise they had another European truck one as well. Uh, fuck knuckle. Fuck knuckle. That was close. Now I just see map. I see it, West Balkans. What? That wasn't there before! Was it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I am very blind. Um, yeah, this... Uh, what's it called? 
Um, what do you think of this album, Zeno? Pretty good. I've already been spec savers. I've already got my specs. All right. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, no worries, Cotto. Speak to you later, man. Um, let us know if you want to join your truck later. <laughs> Need to go again, then. <laughs> Fuck off. To be fair, I'm not wearing my glasses, but... It, it never appeared, but then again... I might have just assumed that that's nothing. I don't know. Oi, give me the position back, Saline. Fuck yeah! I mean, you can't really be actually very close to having glasses. You either need them or you don't. <laughs> you can't be very close and then all of a sudden not need them. It, it's very rare that I come across an album that sounds this good. But as soon as I heard it, I was like, this, this screams motor storm. Like, this is the kind of shit that people that love racing games will absolutely love. Like, I can guarantee this guy's music would be in um, Motorstorm if they made a new one today. Like, right now. I prefer Unbound, but 2015's handling is pretty good. Unbound, the cars feel very light, I'll be honest, but um, they also feel really heavy at the same time. It's a really strange... I need glasses for my brain, though. It is super slow. <laughs> I imagine that. Brain glasses. I probably need brain glasses, to be honest. Make my brain work, please. I've just noticed I've broken one of the wing mirrors. Do you, do you know what's really weird, right? And how accurate uh, the Forza games are? I didn't realize, but the Ferrari Enzo has some really weird shaped door mirrors. To the point that the one on the driver's door is tiny. And the one on the passenger side is fucking huge. Like, normally... The, car designers will make symmetrical door mirrors and then sort of like change the angle slightly of the mirror so that it actually like can be seen by the driver but like Ferrari made two different sized mirrors for the Enzo and it looks really odd now that I've noticed it everyone's gonna fucking hate it but they have two different sized mirrors I think it's the Enzo anyways do you have this album on your profile uh, I don't, but it's on, um, I, it might be under, like, added albums, I don't know. Yeah, because I can't set it as, like, public or private. 
could be on there. Fuck. We let the beast through. But I'm ahead of the beast, it's fine. I'm still ahead of the beast. We're all good. Alright, we're fine. Yeah, the song, it's just called um, Diversified by Tantrum Desire, so. Yeah, the servers are pretty fucked. All right, not bad. I'll take that reward, thank you very much. Give me your shit, sir. I will steal it. That's actually pretty sick though, seeing that uh, angle where the McLaren was right next to us. Oh, this is where the Bugatti's gonna absolutely storm. Because the only time we actually catch up on the Bugatti is when we're going through corners like that. Infinite Night. Oh yeah, I remember Infinite Nitrous. That was brilliant. When I was playing through, I don't know if you noticed, but I had the Infinite Nitrous stuff happen to me while I was playing through Need for Speed 2015. Getting the platinum. And I kid you not, that was fucking hilarious. Just blasting it round. This car was absolutely mental. And you set it as most powerful as well, so it has basically the biggest effect. Well, the Bugatti Veyron has basically just lost us. Ah, oh, but we've got the chicanes. Let's go. Are we in slipstream distance? I don't think so. Ah, oh, no, we are. Because I know we aren't accelerating quicker than that without slipstream, so... We must be in slipstream. Yeah, we're definitely in slipstream now. Uh, big tank has to slow down earlier. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, zero, zero to top is just fucking unreal in Need for Speed. Oh, I miss it a bit. This is just swerved in front of a three ton behemoth. Do you know the one thing I never understood right? Volkswagen decided, do you know what? We're going to make an engineering masterpiece, but it's going to weigh two tons. Like, how they made the Bugatti weigh so much and yet handle like it weighed. I mean, it weighed a lot and it handled like it weighed a lot, but. It still drove fast. I'm very interested for the next Bugatti, though. Because the next one's going to be made by Bugatti Rimac. So Rimac's obviously going to have an input on the development of the Bugatti now. We're obviously going to have hybrid powered Bugattis, so it's going to be electric and petrol. Oh, 
on hard mode, he goes off the track and cuts the chicane. Yeah, fuck the chicane. Fuck you, chicane. Who needs chicanes anyways? Like, why were they invented? Oh, you're a prick, you're a prick, you're a motherfucking prick. Alright, not bad. Two more laps to go. If you counteract all of my mistakes, this should be a 12 minute race. Let's have a look at the interior of this. Oh wow, now this is a nice interior. Look at the fucking real estate on that window. There's just so much surface area, it's unreal. Is that the um, shipping container area? Where they have all the shipping containers. I didn't think it was like an actual docks. I thought it was just... Um, what's it called? Like a storage area. I didn't think there was actual, like, water on <laughs> near it. He has to give me back the position. He cut the chicken. Oh, he cut the onion and now I'm crying. It's not fair. <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to do an entire lap on interior for this. Why not? Fernando! Unpopular opinion, but I think Fernando Alonso is a little bit overrated. I think the only reason people like him so much is a similar story to, like, Seb. Where he's been in there so long, everyone absolutely loves him. But Vettel, like, he was an amazing character. He was a good driver. He won world championships four times. Like, Alonso has won two world championships, but he won them in his prime, and he's not. I don't know. He just had a method of driving those Renaults that meant that he was insanely fast in those cars. And I think fair enough. But as soon as you apply Fernando Alonso to any other cars, he's not a very great driver. He has retired karma. <laughs> karma, bitch. You tip, you tip. Oh no, you can see the Bugatti in the mirror. Get back. Get back. Oh. oh, fair enough. Did not know that. Do you know, the one thing I find really weird, right, about Need for Speed 2015 is it is insanely, like, Japanese-inspired, the map. 
like, you think you've got cities, you've got drift roads like that. You look at games like, um, oh, for fuck's sake. You look at games like Need for Speed Payback and Need for Speed 2019 and all that. It, it doesn't have the same vibe, but some of the roads in Need for Speed 2015 is like... Almost like Japanese mountain kind of style. I don't know. Especially some of the narrow... Se there are, is a section that's extremely narrow. Which makes the map almost seem a bit odd because it seems like it's, you know, like Detroit, Brooklyn, whatever it is, trying to be something else. It's a really weird, weird map. Yeah, I suppose. They don't really work though because it's just too big. Like, the cars are too quick and the roads are too narrow. Look, I'm doing a fucking Romain Grosjean. Look. I'm swerving and blocking the car. <laughs> Get back, bitch. Next, I'll be showing the black flag. Black flag, you're disqualified. Woohoo. I do think this new Need for Speed, though, is a step in the right direction for Need for Speed as a whole. Bring it back. That Bugatti is getting very close. I don't like it. But after this corner, it is pretty much just corners after this straight. So... We should have a pretty decent chance at... Gaining that distance. My neck really needs, like, clicking. I'm doing a Grosjean. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, that's kind of a problem in Unbound as well. Like, there is... The cars really do get... Like, a lot of the cars, they feel lighter than they should do. But they also feel heavier than they should do. So, I'm not really sure what to... I don't know. I do think Unbound is, like, leaps and bounds ahead of what la pr like previous Need for Speed games have been, if you excuse the pun. We've just all of a sudden changed how the turbocharger works. Hey, I can put a Tesco's club card in between my graphics card. Nice. <laughs> That's brilliant. I can fit it between each of the heat fins. <laughs> I got a new card holder, let's go. <laughs> a very expensive one, it costs 300 plus quid. <laughs> Gains more power when the turbo spools up, but for some reason gradually loses a lot of power in the last few hundred RPMs. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. That shouldn't be how it works. 
But then again, yeah, need for speed logics. I really need to drive that McLaren. Is that in black or is that dark green? It looks like dark green. It looks like black. I don't know. Might have been the green reflection of the grass then. Right, that Bugatti has fucking stormed it. Genuine perfection. Mm. To break me down. A heart of stone, a smoking gun, I can give you life, I can take it away. Uh, chat, I'm gonna lose you in five minutes because I can't actually find where my remote is for my monitor and I can't reach behind it. So, in five minutes, I'm gonna lose you for a bit. Unless I do it now. Hang on. Oh, Ooh, I'm gonna go wide! Oh. <laughs> okay, that was a bad time. I should have done it on the big straight. Yeah, blue on black, tears on the river. Ow. Beep, beep. Not doing great. That Bugatti looks very hungry. Tip of your tongue. About me starting to watch Rally. Ooh, yes. They've actually got a new thing coming out soon. Um, it's actually reminded me. they got a new thing coming out soon for WRC, and it's called Rally.TV. Um, it's basically an app that allows you to watch WRC. Um, ERC, European Rally Championship, and Rallycross all in one app, which I think is really good because obviously having three apps on your phone is a bit of a pain in the ass. so having them all in one place is good. I'm hoping that it doesn't take away from the experience of each individual app, though. 
Because I, I don't want to have to go onto like WRC and then see European Rally. Like, if it's like you click on it and you get three different apps. Isn't it though that Sweden's only allowed to broadcast their own one for free? I thought there was a rule that countries could broadcast their own rally 100% free, but... It was only their home country that you could do. Similar with Formula One. Formula One only allows like British television channels to show the full thing for free if it's the British Grand Prix like that can be live full thing for free otherwise they have to do cropped up highlights for every other race have a look in on that one Wolfie um, because I doubt there'd be anywhere that streams it for free um, it might be, but uh, just double check on that and make sure it's not just the Swedish rally and that it is all of the rallies, because if it's not all of them, you will have to do WRC+. Plus. I don't have a wheel though. I've got an Xbox One, not a PlayStation One. That's a problem. It sucks. I, I really want... A... There was actually a PlayStation wheel in CEX and I was tempted to go in and ask and say, if I give you like 20 quid, can I swap the wheels? Because I really just want to play some PlayStation stuff, but it could be asked. I got the Logitech uh, G920, so that's the Xbox One, PC one. The G923 has like two different versions. Can you send me the website so I can have a look? Actually, probably... I don't know. Is it like an official like TV channel or is it like a rebroadcaster? Like a site where you watch it is technically pirated kind of stuff. You're... But the G923 is belt driven. What do you mean? Do you mean direct drive?
Because the G923 and the G920 and the G23 are all belt driven wheels. Isn't it? I'm 99% sure it's belt driven. Because you normally have like belt driven and gear driven wheels, which are pretty much identical. And then direct drive. Where it's just directly attached to a really powerful fucking motor. But to be honest, if you're if it's not going from whatever Logitech is to a belt driven isn't much of an upgrade. Like the two types, I think there is two types, but it's gear driven, fair enough. I was 99% sure yeah, I might have been mixing it up, but I know Belt driven and gear driven are very similar anyways. To the point is there's not really much point upgrading it. If you're upgrading it, have a look at a Fanatec with a fucking direct drive. Because Fanatec have some cheaper direct drive wheels that are actually really good. Pretty similar. Because it's not directly transferring it, you don't have full accuracy to the false feedback. It's not as responsive or accurate. Whereas if you're using something, say, a direct drive, that's a lot more accurate. Fucking hell, I'm really trying to... I haven't used a belt driven then, apparently, so no. But even then, direct drive is the way to go. And I can't imagine, like, for a direct drive wheel, it's about $500. Maybe $600. Uh, if you're looking at the Fanatec one for the Gran Turismo. Look at message, you blind geezer. Sure. There is no message. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.